what's up guys let me give you a important topic which is the deactivation of our catalyst and that's essentially the decline on our catalyst activity with time so as time passes by our catalyst is going to not work perfectly start to convert less and not only less but uh, more time is required for that reaction and essentially this is due to these three things the aging phenomena which is essentially due to the change in structure due to poisoning which is the irreversible deposition of substances on active sites this is very bad actually this one cost a lot of money to revert and the falling or cooking which is essentially having carbonaceous or cavernous depositions on all the surface as I will call it actually is just this is getting dirty but of course in chemistry you cannot say dirty you need to say falling or caulking something more fancy so let's see them the first one was aging phenomena also called sintering it is the loss of catalytic activity due to a loss of active surface area okay so before maybe you had a lot of area with a lot of active spots but with time they change their shape and they no longer work and this is typical on high phase temperatures the higher the temperature well you're going to of course promote a formation or crystallization of materials and once they change their shape well you cannot use them anymore two types of these is the first one is crystal agglomeration and the growth of the metals deposited on the support so if you're talking about the support let's say people have example where silica or alumina so let's say the metal is you have your catalyst here and the metal I don't know maybe is interrupting or changing the shape of your actual catalyst which maybe that is palladium or uh, platinum and the other one which is I think the most obvious one is the narrowing or closing of the pores inside the catalyst, catalyst palette so if you have this here and before you had this let's say tunnel right here let's say due to high pressure or high temperatures this is going to be a little bit shorter so before you got this molecule it says it barely could fit in and now you have the same it won't fit and it won't react okay once again due to recrystallization and formation or elimination of surface defects so if this is a tip is of course a, a rule or a thumb roll uh, before 40 percent of the melting temperature of the solid it's okay to work that so if i don't know maybe you have silica i don't know what's the temperature but let's say it's about this temperature so if you're working with 1000 it's not good for that and if you're working with maybe 300 celsius probably it's a good option now coking or falling or as i would say when they get dirty and you can see it right here you have this material pretty nice almost new and then after use you're going to have this black or dusty image is the most common one involving especially hydrocarbon production so in the refinery you're going to find a lot of this the result is due to the deposition of carbonaceous material on the surface of the catalyst and one thing I wanted to tell you guys is that probably you're going to uh, hear a lot spent cast the catalyst so probably you hear your boss telling oh the amount of uh, spent catalyst is has increased in the last six months that's bad guys means that you are using more catalyst and probably well if you're of course reacting more material will be okay but if you're having the same products the products stay the same and the amount of spent catalyst is spent catalyst is growing well that's terrible because you're using more catalyst for the same production okay and this one is also pretty common the activation by poisoning poisoning don't think it's like human poisoning but I like to call it because poisoning sounds so bad and this is true because the molecules are going to essentially be chemiabsorbed or essentially absorb on the active sites irreversibly what does that mean once they go here they will stay forever at least chemically forever 
and for example you maybe think that you have 1000 spots active sites and then after time some sulfur bad guy is going to stay there and after I don't know maybe uh, one day of operation you have 900 active sites so you lost 10% of that due to the sulfur so what you're going to do is essentially or you take or get rid of the sulfur before using your catalyst or you're going to have to regenerate your catalyst which also means a lot of money in petroleum feed stocks uh, you contain or you have a lot of impurities and why is that because they are in the ground and they have many materials such as sulfur heavyweight metals such as lead mercury etc and many other components that are very costly to remove so either you separate them before because it will cost you uh, later more or you accept the price and see if the economic favor your business so let's say you have all these we have two types the first one sulfur goes and reacts to this active site and they are red because they're not going to be uh, able to be used any longer in the future or you have this phosphorus glazing which is worse because they just go and let's say it's like a blanket they will have no physical contact and since they have no physical contact they will have no chemical contact as well this one goes for the same you have this material let's say that this red gas is not good for you you want the yellow gas and the yellow gas is reacting right here and the gray here Let's say there are active sites that are already taken maybe with lead P B plumbium. Okay, and that's everything on section one guys. I'm very happy for you. You're done. And if you need to know a little bit more on theory, this is actually very generic theory. You can find it in Wikipedia, it's good. It, you have the at least the most basic information. And in the next one, we're going to be analyzing some reactions, some catalysts and their application on real life industry. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.